Where's my damn hover bike? You know, that thing we saw as kids flying through the forest of Endor. Or those hoverboards that Marty used to escape Biff's grandson in the far-flung future of 2015. Where are they? Well, it turns out we made them 70 years ago. This has been invented by Mr. McCarty, an American. It's what you might call a personal helicopter, and it evidently works. Yes, it seems all right as long as he doesn't step off while he's going. It's powered by an outboard motor and can easily land on water. Look, no hands. In the 1950s, we were awash with projects promising the transport of the future. I'm not talking about flying cars, I'm talking about one-man flying platforms that operated more like a surfboard or a jet bike than a plane or a car. They were called everything from aerocycles to prop copters, and they were cool. And they were possibly the biggest revolutionary in the military since the machine gun. But these aircraft never got mass produced, and we never got our Jetsons future. This is why. During World War II and the subsequent war in Korea, the US military and its allies discovered the usefulness of helicopter aircraft, a machine that could land vertically and be used from everything from attack, defense, medical rescue, scouting, and more. Attention all personnel, report immediately to admitting ward and operating room. Attention all personnel, report immediately to admitting ward and operating room. However, it wasn't the end-all solution. Helicopters were fragile, slow-moving targets that didn't really have the flexibility to be used with soldiers on the ground, outside evac or deployment. The military wondered if there was a way to take the helicopter technology and shrink it down to the point that a single soldier could use it within a small combat scenario, as well as be simple enough that even a basic conscript could use it within 20 minutes of training. It was this second point that had the most brilliant breakthrough. Charles H. Zinnemann of the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, which was the precursor to NASA, came up with an ingenious way to steer this idea of a new machine. The steering would be entirely done by shifting the body weight back and forwards or side to side, just like a skateboard, snowboard, or those weird hoverboards that everybody got from China in 2015. The advantage would also mean that the user would be able to hold a rifle whilst in flight, or perhaps use a mounted machine gun. No hands. And with that idea, the flying platform, or the aerocycle, was born. But who would actually build it? Now, I know you're all hungry for knowledge, like what happens to this guy if he falls off his platform, but you might also be hungry in real life. And if it's the latter, then this is a heck of a deal that will save you money with today's sponsor, HelloFresh. HelloFresh delivers you fresh, local and seasonal produce with inspired mouth-watering recipes. And no, they didn't tell me to say that exact line, the food is actually that damn good. Perfect! So skip the grocery store and spend more time soaking up the late summer sun. HelloFresh Market is a one-stop shop for all your mealtime needs with quick breakfasts, lunch, snacks, desserts and more. Fit and wholesome recipes that make it easy to eat well without sacrificing flavor and doesn't taste like airline food. So you can maintain your goals and feel good about your food choices with HelloFresh. It's foolproof, it has step-by-step -step instructions and it's pretty fun to cook because you feel like a five-star chef. Plus HelloFresh cuts back on the time spent in the kitchen so it only takes around 30 minutes. I personally love HelloFresh because I can focus on the cool 3D animations that you see and not worry about dinner. Use my link or go to hellofresh.com and use the code POGFOUNDSEPT16 for 16 free meals across seven boxes, plus three surprise gifts. So if you love great food and found it explained, click that link. Oh, and you're probably wondering what happens to that guy on the platform if he falls off? Well, look at this thing. You know exactly what would happen. 
Various helicopter builders at the time in the early 50s heard about this new flying platform concept and wanted to get in, seeking out the armed forces to win these contracts. If they got it right, the military would build millions of them, and it would open a new age of military flexibility. Predictions were made that the craft could provide transport to a modern version of the old horse cavalry, providing airborne eyes and ears for the army. But like all technological revolutions, it starts with two rivals. The first to submit a bid was Hiller Aircraft. Yes, the same helicopter aircraft company that came up with the idea to catch the Saturn V rocket with a helicopter, which you can watch on our sister channel Escape Velocity right now. The link's down below. It would be called the Hiller VZ-1 Pawnee, and it would simply be a direct lift rotor aircraft with a contra-rotating ducted fan lifting a simple platform for one man and equipment. It could carry a person up to 185 pounds at a speed of 16 miles per hour, 10 meters above the ground, or 33 feet in freedom units. But they weren't the only company to come up with this idea. Their second contender was from Der Lackner Helicopters, and their concept was slightly more terrifying. Der Lackner approached the US Army brief with the DH-4. Consisting of a simple cross-shaped frame, it had the pilot standing over the engine that powered contra-rotating rotors. There were also four landing pads that could double as inflators to land on the surface of water. And just so you know, the pilot was actually strapped in. I shudder to think what would happen if they were to slip into the blades below. The DH-4 was expected to be able to carry up to 120 pounds of cargo on top of the weight of the pilot or an auxiliary 5 US gallon fuel tank to extend its range up to an extra 50 miles. A cargo lifting line could also be threaded through the rotor shaft for carrying slung loads underneath the craft. Now, I would be lying if I didn't mention that there was actually a third contender with a real looking aerocycle concept. It was called the Benson B-10 Propped Copter and it was pretty unconventional. It was made out of a beam that had engines mounted to each other with rotors. These rotors would steer the downwash, which was linked to a single joystick used by the pilot. But it wasn't used beyond the prototype stage, and I'm not entirely sure why. So if anybody knows, let me know down in the comments. Prototypes of the other two concepts were built, and then it was time to test them. Face-off style. Hiller was the first to test their aerocycle concept in Brooklyn in 1955. It was called the 1031A1, but it wasn't exactly up to the requirements set up by the army. So they built a more powerful version called the VZ-1 Pawnee, which I mentioned earlier, and three of each were built. Because of the ducted fan design during testing, it was found to be very stable, despite the high center of gravity. But there was also a flaw. Because the new Pawnee was so much larger, the kinesthetic controls, like the skateboard for the feet, no longer worked, and thus required conventional controls like a helicopter. And conventional controls means conventional training. This killed the concept as it was no longer a symbol for a soldier to use, leaving the gates wide open for the Der Lackner HZ-1 aerocycle. Der Lackner's version, thanks to sticking close to the army's requirements, passed with flying colors, raking up over 15 hours of flight time. It was fast, it could extend its range, and it could carry plenty of cargo. It was so promising that the generals from the Pentagon commissioned up to a dozen more prototypes to send out to various testing facilities and terrains across the country. But then it came time for the army evaluators, the actual people to use it in the field, to get their hands on it. And what they found will send you into a spin. The test program was transferred to Fort Eustis in Virginia, where one captain, Selma Sunby, took over the test flying duties. His primary concern was it actually simple enough for an army grunt to use this flying machine? 
Delacta had claimed that it only required 20 minutes of training to be able to fly their aero cycle, but that had some had even learned to fly it in under five minutes. But was this true? The captain very quickly found out that it was far more difficult to fly than initially expected, and that he wouldn't trust anyone under his command to fly it without extensive experience. The rotors were also prone to cutting the grass and kicking up rocks when you tilted it during flight, making it a bit more of a hazard to use. And that was before the crashes. Oh yes, two high profile crashes occurred after prolonged use. Exactly 43 minutes to be exact, something not tested initially. Essentially what happened was that the contra rotating rotors would collide over time, the blades shattering and the entire platform crumbling down. Thank goodness that they were actually tethered and flying without a pilot as someone may have gotten hurt. It was also discovered that during wind tunnel tests that the claimed forward speed was limited by the tilt that the pilot could perform, meaning it could go fast, but you might tip right over. With these two problems unable to be resolved, the De Lacker concept was put on ice. But that wasn't the main reason why the concept was scrapped. The real problem with these flying platforms, or hover bikes as I like to call them, is that they're so darn loud, they're slow, and they don't really perform enough of a role that more advanced helicopters couldn't do in bulk. You can't sneak up on an enemy when you have two helicopter blades buzzing away at your feet. Also, there's no armor, so you could easily be shot down. That is, of course, if your bike didn't fall apart after 43 minutes into the flight. But you bet that this idea of a one-man transport wasn't done yet. In the 1980s, a cruise missile engine builder, Williams International, developed a small single-person lightweight VTOL aircraft. It pretty much looked like someone standing at a pedestal with a joystick and was named the Flying Pulpit, or more officially, dubbed the Williams X-Jet. It could be flown in any direction, hover, rotate on its axes, and get up to a speeds of 60 miles per hour for 45 minutes. It could also lean around corners with the pilot shifting their body weight, just like the ideas 30 years before. But just like the previous versions, there were some concerns. It was found to be inferior to helicopters, now leagues above their 1950s counterparts. And thanks to the slow rise in drone technology, much of the use of the Williams X would be replaced by a robotically controlled aircraft into the future. For this concept, it was simply too late. And that's why we never got our hover bikes. But you still bet today that companies are trying their hardest to bring the concept back. Current developments include Mallory Aeronautics, the Aero X, the Hover Surf Scorpion 3, but the most exciting would be the rumor of the Speeder under development by the US Navy. A top speed hover bike with 200 miles per hour and a flight endurance of 60 minutes. So watch this space. But to be honest, I don't know why they bothered when we could have just had a jetpack instead. Future video perhaps? <laughs>